Good morning. Uh, my name is Nasser Wadadi. I'm the Civil Rights Outreach Director for the American Islamic Congress. Um, it's an honor and a pleasure to be here today um, at this event. Um, I'd like to thank Director uh, Hilan Neuer for uh, his hard work. I'd like to thank Ariel. And also, um, it's an honor to be sitting with um, some of the uh, most prominent voices uh, in the fight for human rights and equality, and not only in the Middle East, but also globally. And I mean these words because very much my life has been revolving around the, um, these very same issues. I come from Mauritania, a country that very few have heard of, right? Tucked between Morocco and Senegal on the Atlantic uh, coast of Africa. And um, having grown up in, um, in a privileged environment and uh, was raised actually as a child of diplomat across the region, where I became more familiar with the intricacies and um, the societies of places like Libya, Syria, and that means also meeting the heads of states, uh, kings, then later on having my entire worldview and perception, everything that I was being told in, um, as the high values that guided um, both my government and my society to be completely shattered by a simple encounter with slavery. And that happened as I was 13 years old by um, going into my ancestral um, uh, region and the country and meeting a young boy who could never stop, um, finish playing with us, the rest of us, the normal kids, because he was always in a hurry to go uh, um, to the so-called master's home because simply he was inherited between three siblings as a slave and um, as such he was their property that um, uh, was something that I could not process, could not uh, understand and ultimately came not to accept and um, actively reject by joining the anti-slavery uh, movement in my country. At the time, um, uh, merely talking about slavery uh, would have landed you in jail and you would have uh, earned one of uh, those ubiquitous labels and charges that some of my colleagues here on the panel today are so familiar with, agents of imperialism, um, Zionists, et cetera, et cetera. And um, in, in, in the, 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 the dramatic reality of the struggle for civil rights in, in Mauritania is that very much so, no one cared. And I'm not saying this uh, merely to blame anyone, but just simply to point a fact that here we are, um, uh, you'd forgive my, my, uh, my, my cynicism and uh, blister, blistering critiques. Um, frankly, someone who, like myself, who spent half a lifetime trying to stop something so basic as uh, slavery, uh, having never been um, heard or given attention by the United Nations, and by the way, a lot of uh, human rights organizations, that somehow had a hierarchy of victimhood where the, the plight of slaves in Mauritania did not rank very high on. And um, I came to the United States after having my own run-ins with uh, my, uh, my government at then, and also my society, because at the time, uh, attacking slavery and demanding an end to it uh, was tantamount uh, to blasphemy as the call for separation of state and religion uh, was also akin in, an, in the Islamic Republic of Mauritania, which preceded Iran's by the way, uh, uh, but was simply uh, not acceptable. However, the reality there in Mauritania is very much reflects that one of, um, in, uh, in the Arab world and also Iran, is that this struggle this fight for basic rights has always been going on. This is the, the other conflict of the Middle East that has been ignored for so long and exploded in Iran in 2009 as a warning bell, as a warning sign, and then exploded in tiny little Tunisia. And my contention here, and that's the, uh, the other point that I would like to make here, to, is that the real challenge that faces um, the so-called Arab Spring, I, personally prefer the term um, the uprisings without putting an any ethnic uh, label on it because this is a phenomenon that started in Iran and one can go even uh, before that. My central contention and the point that I would like to share with you comes as a warning actually. My warning to you ladies and gentlemen is that the future of that region of the world hinges on, on a simple 
uh, observation. Uh, an observation that has been deadly at times, that democracy is not merely the act of casting a, a, a vote in a ballot box. Ahmadinejad is quote unquote elected, even though that it's a fraudulent process. Uh, Omar Hassan al-Bashir uh, in Sudan, a genocidal tyrant, tyrant who um, is elected, quote end quote. Even Bashar al-Assad of Syria is elected. And the warning here, that, ladies and gentlemen, is that the fight in the Middle East and North Africa is not so much for democracy, because that's a game that has been played and perfected by forces that are very much in opposition to that very concept of democracy. And I'm talking here about the Islamist movements uh, in their different shades. The game, my, my friends, is one of civil rights, individual rights, because that's, that's very much the, 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 the only way to inoculate against that virus of not only extreme, extremism, Islamist or otherwise, but also for the, from the reemergence of other one-man rule regimes that will continue brutalizing uh, uh, the people of the region. And if anything we've learned in the past 60 years, it's not like these atrocities that have been committed across the region were secret or unknown. They were known and anyone who cared enough to, dip, uh, to dig uh, uh, deep down would have heard about them. The problem and the lesson we've learned in the last 60 years, and I'm sad to say this, is to actually bank on the indifference of the international community. If not, it's an efficiency and an, effect, an effective way to deal with these challenges. Uh, Iran sailed, the, the uprising in 2009 sailed by with uh, Western leaders, heads of uh, democracies merely uh, uh, sh uh, expressing concern at times or uh, sending words of hope with zero action <coughs> because of larger interest at, um, um, at play, because of fears going uh, beyond uh, the rights of um, uh, or commitment to the future of that region. And I think, and uh, my work through the American Islamic Congress, um, has taught me a very valuable lesson, that the future of that region, having trained th over 350 activists starting as early as 2005, some of them, by the way, em uh, emerged later to become leaders in these, uh, these uprisings, um, campaigning and, uh, for, 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 for some of the most uh, uh, prominent and ultimately inspiring dissidents in the last decades, taught me another lesson is that the youth of the region know what democracy is about. They understand it. They don't need anyone to tell them what democracy is about. As a matter of fact, they time and again sent that message. Before the uprisings via social media, via blogs, the flurry of blogs in 2005 uh, as the Cedar Revolution happened in Lebanon. However, what, what, the, what the, these nascent movements need most importantly are actually the very simple things and practical things that can make it a, a world of difference. I'm talking here about strategic planning skills. How to go, and these are not uh, uh, the, the, how to take a, an abstract idea. How does a Berber in Morocco design a campaign and organize around it to secure his right to name, give, his, uh, give his child an Amazir name. Simple, right? Tiny thing, but makes a world of difference. This is how you, you set up the institutions and the basis for a vibrant civil society that will ultimately, again, inoculate these, uh, the, 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 these different societies from the threat of totalitarianism, dictatorship, and also fundamentalism. The, 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 the tragedy of the last 60 years of, um, in that region has been, first of all, and it's a little bit part of my dream, is the loss of that somewhat uneasy diversity that existed, the stamping out of differences, um, the, the wiping out of cultural communities, uh, all across the region, there's no, no exception, and no, and there's no one really uh, that, that is exceptional in the Arabic speaking uh, Middle East and Iran. Uh, that culture, that diversity, that pluralism has been wiped out and has been relegated 
um, to, to, to marginality within the discourses of, uh, of that region. There are people today who are born in that region who do not know that Jews resided right in the, uh, next door uh, to them. They do not know that, for example, the Christians of Lebanon, the Maronites, were the ones who revived the Arabic language in the 19th century. I'm talking here about the dream of a pluralist society that respects individual rights, not merely just the talk of democracy, the lofty idea. Democracy, just like, like that, frankly, has not meant much. Because if ha had it meant much, it would have moved Western democracies in the past to, ha to hold these dictatorships accountable, to stop their abuses. That did not happen, we know that. But it's not here uh, my place to simply point fingers. There are a lot of problems that are even, um, I'd, I'd argue, factors that contributed to the, the disasters that befell that region in the last six decades that are internal to those societies. And the glimpse of hope, even though that I say it with cautious um, um, optimism, in that region is again that youth that segment of society, while we're all focused um, on the big pictures and the big geopolitical conflicts, these are the peoples who proved that there is another way in the region. And I argue that investing in, the, uh, in that youth, supporting them, and also giving them room to, um, to, uh, to uh, mount solutions, not only, by the way, through some talk like human rights forums or uh, political organizing. I argue, and that's a program that we've been working on uh, for the last three years in uh, the American Islamic Congress, is investing in young social entrepreneurs. People who will go on the ground and exercise all the trappings of democracy. And I would add to that, liberal democracy, without ever using these words. Helping people to set up little uh, 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 communities uh, in, uh, within their cities that will be going, uh, advocating for religious rights, for tolerance, for free speech, for women's rights. One of the biggest markers, by the way, for uh, benchmarks for progress in the region. I still will hold judgment on whether uh, this, uh, the Arab uprisings have succeeded or not because one of the most important markers, and Libya will be one of the, the test grounds for that, is whether women's rights will be respected and will be not, mere, not only the lip service, but in practice. Elections, access, equality under the law, and the striking of any statutes or laws that limit women's rights in any way possible. Because, ladies and gentlemen, women's rights, just for, as the uh, uh, free speech, uh, are universal values. And that's one of the things, unfortunately, that seemed to plague the, the United Nations uh, Human Rights Council, because obviously, uh, from, from their lack of action and offering memberships uh, to such egregious violators of human rights, clearly there's a double standard. You were right. There's a glaring double standard. And I'd say it's a cultural relativist dov double standard, where we, the rest of the world, who had, did not have tradition of liberal democracies are somewhat seen as having barbarism written in our genetic code. The bigotry of lower expectation could not have been more glaring than, than there. And we've taken upon ourselves um, to reverse that, not simply by den denunciations, but also through a strategy of show rather than tell concrete action on the ground with the youth, with those who, who are actually the majority uh, of, uh, of the region, to advance towards a pluralistic society, not merely a society where every four years somebody calls for an election, it's cast, uh, people vote, and then business as usual. That ultimately is, uh, is what m will make the difference and will tell us whether indeed um, uh, this wave of uprisings has changed uh, these societies dramatically. Now, on, uh, on the point of my personal hope, my personal dream for the region, um, AIC has ran in the last six years something we call the Dream Deferred Essay Contest. And one of the essays that I remember most vividly was written in 2006. It, it was projected in time in 2014 where the author, a young man, um, 
was imagining the police guarding citizens while they were protesting against the government, demanding rights uh, uh, in, uh, to express themselves and also to, um, to change the government during, an, uh, during a campaign designed to stop uh, the place, uh, basically the, uh, the, the son of the leader um, from running for, for, for elections. Ladies and gentlemen, that, that young man that wrote, uh, wrote that essay and projected it in time, imagining that it will be taking place in 2014, he got it though wrong when he th thought that Hillary Clinton would be president. Uh, however, he said that this is going to happen in Tahrir Square and that uh, the citizens will come out peacefully and demand their rights and that they will ultimately succeed. Little did he know or we know that it this would not have waited till 2014. It happened to 2011. My dream is very much like the dream of that young man for the, for the region. Uh, I want a society that respects my individuality, my rights as a human being. I want a society where my daughter will not be curbed back because of some arcane or archaic religious uh, prescription. I want a society where my choice of religion remains in my st strictest dom uh, personal domain. I want a society where my color of, sk of skin is not going to hamper me. It's not going to be held against me. I want a society where I can think, I can blaspheme, I can believe, I can love, I can write, I can film in freedom, not fearing a, a government and certainly not fear, fear, fearing a cleric. And most importantly, I want a, 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 a society where my conscience is my domain. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.